So we will start by asking a question as to what bioelectromagnetics means. Uh, bioelectromagnetics is the study of how biological systems respond to electromagnetic waves. And uh, in this study, uh, we need to understand certain uh, you know fundamental aspects so that we can undertake this study profitably. Uh, one is uh, uh, an idea of what a wave is and what are electric fields and magnetic fields. And also interaction between electric uh, electromagnetic waves and lossy dielectrics because when we talk of biological systems we uh, undertake scientific studies by modeling these systems in uh, terms of materials materials whose characteristics electrical characteristics match closely with that of actual biological systems uh, therefore dielectrics and uh, lossy dielectrics lossless dielectrics conductors so these are the materials which are used to model such systems therefore we need to understand how electromagnetic uh, uh, waves interact with uh, such materials and we also have to look at uh, the factors that uh, affect electromagnetic energy absorption by biological systems. So these are the aspects on which I, I hope to be able to give some uh, ideas on this. And uh, before we proceed further, it is uh, you know pertinent to ask as to why the study of bioelectromagnetics is important, that we can look at uh, from two perspectives. One is the application point of view, and then there is uh, the possible health effects point of view, which also can be of uh, significant interest. And uh, in applications itself, there are two uh, different domains that we can consider. One is medical diagnostics. Electromagnetic waves find application in medical diagnostics, not only that, in also therapeutic applications. And there are medical diagnostics, there are a lot of medical imaging, electrocardiography, electroencephalography, and so on. And whereas in therapeutic applications, we have, of course, well-known applications include cancer treatment, pain control, soft tissue repair, and, and so on. And coming to this uh, possible health impact, as we all acknowledge, we are continuously immersed in weak electric and magnetic fields all the time. You see the uh, gadgets that, that, that surround us, uh, satellites, televisions, mobile phones, base station antennas, and everything, all kinds of gadgets. So most of these uh, emanate very weak uh, electromagnetic radiation. So we are all the time immersed in uh, such radiation. But fortunately, uh, no adverse health effects have been uh, found from exposure to low level long term exposure. But however, we have to add the rider that the it has not been confirmed so far. No possible uh, ill effects have been confirmed. But however, debate has been uh, considering in the literature. But at the same time, exposures to higher levels uh, might be harmful. But then fortunately, they are restricted by national and international uh, guidelines. And uh, so there are certain areas of uh, public concern that include power lines, microwave ovens. Is microwave oven, for example, is safe? Uh, debates go, go on. And computer and TV screens, radars, mobile phones, and base stations. An interesting uh, recent study, uh, this is uh, a Havana syndrome, where US diplomats in Cuba, they, uh, they report certain health effects, and that uh, based on a study, they have reported that it could have been caused by uh, microwave, uh, directed microwave radiation. So 2020, those of you interested can uh, just Havana syndrome, uh, BBC News, you can just look at uh, this, this item. I'm not uh, displaying it now. Uh, so the implication is that, no, if you just uh, reflect on this, uh, the fact that electromagnetic waves on the one hand find applications and on the other, they also, I mean, result in you know, uh, concern of possible health impact, it is possible because of the fact that they interact with the biological systems, right? If they don't interact, they obviously we don't have to care, but they do interact. Uh, 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 so this interaction happens by inducing currents and voltages in the, in the human body. And in the process, there is energy absorption taking place. Like, I mean, if you assume a situation where electromagnetic energy enters, but then leaves without leaving any energy trace within the body, then we don't have to uh, bother about it, right? But then it, it results in energy absorption through the induction of currents and voltages in the body. In fact, even in the absence of an external electromagnetic field, there are tiny currents and voltages that uh, that uh, you know that exist in our body and in fact they only control uh, processes such as digestion and brain activities and all 
and we know that the physician uses uh, ecg for uh, health monitoring of the heart that is possible because uh, heart is electrically active also so therefore given all these factors understanding and interaction between electromagnetic uh, waves and biological systems can be of uh, significant use now obviously we need to have an understanding of electromagnetic fundamentals and fundamentals of how biological systems can be modeled and how uh, these two interact so these are the ideas that we have to develop to uh, to come to a level uh, that will uh, that will prepare us for undertaking uh, further studies so we'll start with asking what is a wave there is a wave and a wave is just an energy disturbance that travels from one location to another uh, we can look at an animation okay now you see please this this is a wave okay so this is a wave so from one point to another any wave carries energy whether it is water waves or sound waves or or anything so this is uh, this is a wave now uh two fundamental parameters of wave uh, they are very important in the context of electromagnetics one is wavelength another is uh, frequency both are of course related uh, let us look at what they mean wavelength frequency because these are going to repeatedly figure in our uh, presentations the presentation uh, so uh, please look at this carefully so the frequency is actually number of cycles per second frequency number of cycles you can see that this wave is periodic a wave uh, for our uh, uh, you know consideration is periodic and the wavelength is you, you can just see the wavelength mark between two peaks right so this is wavelength called lambda uh, denoted by lambda and frequency is number of oscillations per second so this is uh, important uh, so now in an electromagnetic wave so we have seen what is a wave and what are wavelength and frequency now an electromagnetic wave needless to say contains electric and magnetic fields so we have to understand little bit about electric and magnetic fields uh, but before that let us quickly look at the electromagnetic spectrum now having seen what is a wavelength and what is frequency so this is the electromagnetic spectrum and this this corresponds to low frequency you see you can see large wavelength as we have seen uh, wavelength and frequency are actually inversely proportional so these are higher wavelength or uh, low frequency signals and this is called non ionizing radiation non ionizing radiation means these uh, these waves in these frequencies do not uh, uh, do not have sufficient energy to ionize atoms whereas in in contrast the ionizing radiation which are higher frequencies therefore they contain higher energy they can knock off electrons from atoms therefore ionizing them so ionizing radiation is generally considered to be more uh, so potentially harmful than non ionizing radiation but for our purposes we are mostly in electromagnetic uh, our consideration we are mostly concerned about uh, this uh, non ionizing radiation so now we will uh, move on and then discuss uh, the concept of electric field what is this electric field and then what is magnetic field like that we will develop uh, so very simple experiments can be just done to uh, you know understand uh, why we have introduced electric uh, force electric field we can consider let us have two air filled balloons if i just rub them on my head somewhat vigorously and then bring them together uh, okay they will tend to repel each other so this is one observation this can be you can definitely try this at home uh, now this this simple demonstration indicates that there are two kinds in the in the process of rubbing we have done something uh, or something has happened such that the the bodies involved that is balloon and the ball or the palm something has taken place so we say that they are electrically charged so in the case where there is repulsion obviously uh, it has to be like charges because we know that like charges repel and whereas in the uh, the other case where there is opposite charges they they attract so this uh, so charges have been induced by the process of rubbing so this results in the introduction of this is why based on uh, such observation scientists have introduced the concept of electric uh, field and electric force because there is obviously a force between the balloons or force between the ball and the balloon right uh, uh, this is different from gravitational field because where there is no repulsive force there is always an apple always falls onto the ground right uh, so unlike in the gravitational uh, force gravitational field the electric field is interesting because 
because of uh, the the you know appearance of uh, two different kinds of charges so the just what we have discussed now we can just illustrate uh, using figures um, so like charges when we uh, so anyway charges exert a force that is what we observe from the demonstration that we have just discussed so like charges ripple therefore uh, so this is the direction of force. So force of B on A is directed like this. Similarly, force of A on B is directed like this, right? So this is simple. So this is very, very important in building up the material that, that follows. Now, uh, so like, you know, the fact that the, uh, the charged objects either attract or repel each other, uh, so we can, we can sort of, you know, visualize that the space in between them uh, has to be, identifiable with some property, which is what we call fields, because unless something exists in between the objects, then how is it possible that they attract or repel? Is it not? So we can associate some property with the space surrounding the objects. See, again, uh, this is one way of looking at it because there is an alternative way, uh, which is action at a distance. Of course, we don't uh, get there. We just restrict ourselves to the uh, so-called field description of uh, electromagnetic waves. Therefore, uh, that, that we call field. What the parameter that exists as some, the property that exists in the space surrounding these charged objects, we call that field. And by convention, we represent the electric field due to a positive charge uh, using uh, radially directed or uh, outward directed uh, radial lines like this and the actually the length of the line right the arrow represents the direction and the length represents the magnitude so we can see that the magnitude falls off as you as uh, at larger distances the larger the distance from the charge the smaller is the, the electric field uh, so this is, again, please remember that this is only a visualization idea, the lines. They don't really represent some actual lines existing, okay? That is just for visualization. And uh, by extension, we can consider an electric dipole. A dipole is a configuration where we have a positive and negative charge at a small separation between them. Uh, and you, you see th this, there has to be an attractive force. Therefore, uh, from positive to negative, the field is directed. Uh, but then, uh, though, th as we saw here, the field is radially directed, right? So this also would tend to be radially directed, but since the negative charge attracts, that has to fall back here. That is why the field lines, you know, uh, acquire this kind of uh, form in the context of an electric dipole. We can further extend this idea and look at uh, what happens when we have uh, two charged plates, okay? These are two charged plates. The top plate has positive charge and the bottom plate has negative charge distribution. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the capacitor, I'm sure you are immediately, you know, connecting this with the capacitor. And there is an electric field between uh, the the two plates. The red red color represents the strongest field, and the blue color represents the weakest uh, field. Uh, you can see largely between the uh, plates, the electric field is uniform. Whereas as we get closer to the edges, because the edge is a discontinuity. Because suddenly the, the property becomes different of the uh, medium that adjoins the edges, right? So that introduces discontinuity. Therefore, the field tends to get non-uniform towards the edges. But on the whole, uh, most of the region between the plates, uh, you know, we have uniform electric fields, right? So uh, this is another uh, another illustration where this is a current carrying wire placed over a uh, over a conducting plate, and when we uh, 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 when we administer a potential between them, uh, a positive charge is uh, developed on the wire and the negative charge on the ground plane, resulting in a field configuration uh, like this. Uh, now, so this is electric field. So all these observations, you know, we can just put in the form of, put down in the form of a simple, beautiful equation, which is called Gauss law, and which is one of the Maxwell's equations, a most fundamental equation in electrodynamics for electromagnetics. And this, uh, don't worry too much if you are not familiar with the divergence and all. Here, rho represents the charge, okay, charge density. We call it charge density. A charge, whenever there is a charge, it results in an electric field. So that is the approximate interpretation of this. A charge distribution uh, creates an electric field. So this is one of the fundamental laws of electromagnetics that is helpful in developing an understanding of uh, bioelectromagnetics. Now, we get to one of the most practically important and relevant ideas, which is uh, electric potential. 
now let us uh, let us uh, I, I just take this is this is my mobile uh, let us start with the gravitational potential okay so i have now okay now we know that this mobile phone when i am holding it at this distance uh, it carries energy right how do i know that if i drop it for example i keep my uh, hand and then if i drop it it is going to hurt me how that hurt occurs because of the energy that has been converted into some kinetic energy then resulting in a force on my 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 palm so how is it that this object has acquired the energy that it has right uh, that we say well, it's very easy to interpret as the energy uh, that has got stored uh, uh, by virtue of work done in moving the object for example let us say now now the object doesn't carry energy i'm i'm taking this uh, table as my reference plane now there is uh, uh, no energy but when the object is at this height it means someone has moved it there by doing work right unless i do work i cannot move this here because i have to move this against gravitational field now that work then is stored in the form of an energy that that is called potential energy because it is stationary now when i release it then that is converted into kinetic energy so this is this is the idea so in gravitational uh, in fact in water tanks we keep water tanks on the uh, the top of the building right because the water this way contains potential energy that is why when we open the tap it is able to reach our uh, lower uh, lower levels uh, so this is potential energy in the context of gravitational field but in the context of uh, uh, electrodynamics this gets more interesting simply because as we mentioned earlier in gravity we have only attractive force but in electricity we have an attractive force as well as a repulsive force therefore the idea gets even more interesting in uh, electromagnetics so to understand that let us consider a rectangular coordinate system x y and an electric field is directed in this direction okay an electric field is directed so uh, you know in the context of what we have discussed if the electric field has to be directed in this direction i have to have a positive charge distribution here or uh, in other words a negative charge distribution uh, uh, below the system okay now we, we, we let us take it that i have a positive charge distribution that has resulted in uh, the the establishment of an electric field in this direction now i want to move a positive charge q so this is my positive charge q over a distance dl against the field you see if i just leave it here the charge the particle will tend to move in the direction of the field right is it not because that's also a positive charge but then i want to move it against the field over a distance dl so that is not possible unless an external agent does work that work then is given by from fundamental uh, physics force into distance okay that is the most elementary definition of uh, uh, work then but since the electric uh, field is a vector as we just mentioned uh, this becomes uh, this uh, this is a scalar product this is called a scalar product uh, this only uh, th this is force into distance right qe represents force force due to the electric field and dl is the distance over which i i want to move uh, the charge and this is a dot product product because the work then uh, depends on the direction in which i want to move the charge like uh, if i were to move the charge perpendicular to the field no work then is involved that is why this becomes a scalar product and the negative sign uh, is important because we are moving the charge against the field so that represents this so this is the differential work done i have represented this by differential work done because i am moving it over a differential distance a small distance so we can uh, translate this fundamental equation for this configuration uh, for this configuration by this so d w we can see that it is plus q e d l so q is the charge and e is the electric field d l is the uh, small uh, distance over which i have moved the charge now we introduce and define potential as work done potential differential potential as differential work done per charge which is e d l okay is that clear okay now we can uh, generalize this uh, uh, this this definition by considering this configuration where an electric field is similarly directed like this i have uh, my initial point and final point so this is plus this is minus uh, vba i can write vba as e d e is the electric field and d is uh, the distance between the initial and final point so one very important thing again going back to our 
gravitational force analogy for example we have mentioned that you know this this object contains uh, potential energy that potential energy is independent of the distance or independent of the path the external agent would have uh, followed to uh, take it here because whether i take it straight from the table surface or i go somewhere somewhere and then come here finally what is going to matter is only the initial point let us say initial point and final point not the path followed in uh, taking the object to where it is so this uh, idea also applies in the case of uh, uh, electromagnetics uh, uh, and then it is very not difficult to understand that when e does not vary with time or slowly with time potential difference is a constant so what is the condition e either e does not vary at all or it varies very slowly with the time uh in which case we can approximately uh, say that potential difference is a constant uh it is also independent of the path that as we have discussed however when e field varies rapidly with the time it is not possible to define a unique potential difference because it keeps changing is it not so th that idea is not difficult to follow uh but now uh, one important uh, uh, implication actually we have sort of mentioned this in the process of our discussion a potential difference is required to cause current flow just the way a potential difference is required to uh, cause a water flow <laughs> right you you store water on the top of the building create a potential difference that is what is required for flow of water similarly a potential difference so in batteries and all what we do we create a potential difference in capacitor we create a potential difference and and, and so on so this is uh, the introduction of uh, what we can call ohm's law ohm's law current is given by potential difference by resistance so this is also one of the fundamental equations in electromagnetics so uh, as an aside uh, in electrocardiograms what the electrocardiograms do is to measure potential differences on the surface of the body caused by the beating heart as we mentioned earlier heart is an electrically active that creates potential differences on the surface of the body electrocardiograms actually measure these potential differences and the external defibrillators uh, what they do they do the reverse they create a potential difference between two electrodes on the body uh, which can you know uh, which will be transmitted by the tissues and fluids uh, in the in our body uh, so that uh, the heart can hopefully be restarted right so these ideas now we will uh, just move on to magnetic field concepts uh, magnetic field is produced by moving charges a moving charges constitute current current produces a magnetic field let us look at a simple uh, uh, animation okay. so this carries a current which is directed like this and that causes a magnetic field around this uh, but please remember uh, that this magnetic field is not though only some uh, you know some few four circles are drawn actually speaking theoretically this this field will extend to infinite distance except that it just gets the longer the distance the weaker is the field okay a current carrying conductor uh, produces a magnetic field as we have uh, just seen in that illustration magnetic fields always form loops and we use the right hand rule the, to determine the direction of uh, either current flow or magnetic field for example in this case so how if this is the current carrying wire uh, i hold it like this if my if the thumb represents the direction of current uh, then my fingers right hand rule okay i have held this using my right hand the fingers uh, 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 give the direction of the magnetic field so that is right hand rule uh, magnetic field does not produce a force on stationary charge it's very interesting to reflect it's a simple thing as to why it does not produce a force on stationary charge a stationary charge is not current right so a stationary charge has only electric fields right so electric field and magnetic field in static uh, case they do not interact they are not coupled with each other so they don't bother they don't affect each other but on the other hand when the charge starts moving it represents a current which means it will have its own associated magnetic fields therefore another magnetic field will produce a force okay so magnetic field produces a force on a moving charge just because a moving charge has with it associated a magnetic field so that force is given by bv q test okay q test is the test to charge okay so this is the force and this is for an additional illustration um, so we if we consider a current through a circular loop uh, then the magnetic field lines will be uh, directed in this fashion uh, 
now uh, so we have just you know considered some important fundamental ideas of uh, 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 electric field and magnetic field where we have mentioned that the charges produce electric field and their moving charges produce magnetic field but it is also interesting uh, to note that magnetic fields can act as a source of electric field and also vice versa so that is also a very important uh, uh, you know aspect in electrodynamics we will just consider that uh, we, just we will start with stating one of the most important maxwell's equation which is faraday's law uh, again if you are not familiar with the, uh, this this notation this is called curl of e don't bother too much because all that it it says is a time changing magnetic field okay b is magnetic field e is electric field okay uh, the uh, the a time changing magnetic field produces an electric field so a time changing magnetic field produces an electric field so like you see the title of this slide magnetic field as source of electric field right so a magnetic field can cause electric field when it uh, changes rapidly with the time so this is one of the fundamental laws uh, of course as we have seen a constant magnetic field does not produce electric fields so which means the fields are decoupled so when we say they are decoupled we say the one field does not impact the other that is when the magnetic field is constant or also as we mentioned in the case of electric field when the magnetic field does not change uh, too rapidly okay so that then this uh, uh, quasi static approximation we call it that approximation can be made so if you consider domestic power supply frequency which is 50 hertz in our country it is uh, slow changing right 50 hertz if you just you know uh, wavelength is very large very very large in fact so therefore it causes insignificant magnetic field and therefore insignificant electric field uh, so now but 1 kilohertz 1 kilohertz is not uh, that kind of a low frequency so it will be interesting to look at um, what uh, so this is a, you know non conducting uh, contain a container made of non conducting material it has saline uh, salt water salt water is mildly conductive and there is a 1 kilohertz magnetic field which is directed out of page okay towards towards you okay out of page that will result in the establishment of an electric field please remember faraday's law and this mildly conductive uh, what is its uh, uh, you know relevance to this and all hopefully it will become clear uh, when we just discuss further on uh, uh, materials we will get to that uh, in a short while from now uh, so the time changing magnetic field uh, now this we are considering 1 kilohertz magnetic field which is much higher than 50 hertz right so that will uh, uh, generate an electric field which is directed like this okay and if i insert an object of higher conductivity higher conductivity i mean uh, higher than the mildly conductive saline uh, uh, then uh, the 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 distribution is going to change and especially the distribution will be different within this uh, this material so let us blow this up and then uh, look at this so this is the object of higher conductivity uh, the electric field distribution uh, please remember these arrows represent the electric field caused by the changing magnetic fields which is 1 kilohertz magnetic field which is directed out of page and this um, you know there is certain uh, you know uh, uh, the, the fields within the object of higher conductivity and in the global fluid which is that uh, mildly conductive saline liquid um, they they constructively add in some portions of the material and uh, they oppose each other in other parts that is why it becomes uh, different like this and this idea is very important see the ex uh, excitation of electric field in an object uh, for example by a changing magnetic field that is significantly impacted by the properties of the medium that is the idea so how uh, so this relation we will uh, hopefully uh, become uh, clearer in in uh, due course of course if you look at cellular phones that operate at uh, even much higher frequencies 900 or depending on the band 900 1800 megahertz uh, so this obviously compared to 50 hertz the time derivative of magnetic field is several orders of magnitude uh, you know much much higher than that for uh, so therefore it can cause concern why because magnetic field will be significant therefore electric field will be significant that will induce currents and voltages potentially in the body uh, resulting in energy absorption is it something we should worry about right so this is how the build up is this is how the uh, you know the the broad picture is like that
now we can you know very uh, quick aside on inductive inductive telemetry as you know the cardiac pacemakers there are different you know uh, implantable devices are used and obviously they use batteries right and batteries need to be charged so how are they charged we use inductive coupling uh, the uh, the concept is what we have just discussed so let us consider two coils um if if i uh, if i send a current through this coil that will produce a magnetic field that magnetic field will couple the adjoining coil and inducing in the process a current through that coil okay now let us uh, assume that one of the coils is just outside my body other one is inside in the pacemaker that i may or may not have i i, I have okay uh, then this is how i can charge that uh, ba that battery obviously the efficiency of the charging will be decided by how parallel uh, these two coils Coils are and how close they are together. Okay, those are important. But then the idea is even more important. How we we can charge using the idea of inductive coupling. So uh, so with this. So now we have just discussed as to how a uh, changing magnetic field can be source of electric field. Uh, uh, okay, I think before that I have something more to say. Now many applications use pulse signals. pulse signals like if you just recollect the wave uh, idea that we have discussed wave is periodically changing but there are also applications that use bursts of energy that rise and fall very quickly uh, but these pulses are very interesting uh, I, let us look at this uh, video okay i think you got the idea a pulse which rises quickly and also falls off as quickly that actually can be considered as consisting of a number of periodic signals so that is the idea that we wanted to demonstrate uh, uh, through this this uh, little very interesting animation a pulse actually contains uh, a very large number of uh, periodical uh, wave forms uh, this idea is uh, uh, actually very important uh, i hope i will be able to establish the context uh, in in due course so some applications biomagnetic uh, bioelectromagnetic applications that use pulses or microwave tomography uh, you see which contains frequencies from 300 to 3000 megahertz so on the one hand we talk of pulse but then we also talk of the frequencies it contains okay so this is related uh, uh, though we will not discuss that in detail the the rise time and fall time when we talk of the quickly rises and falls so we can actually in practice we have what is called a rise time and what is called a fall fall time so these times actually determine the 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 extent of uh, the frequencies actually contained in the in the pulses uh, therefore uh, in this application and then confocal imaging which is a type of microwave breast imaging Uh, the frequency uh, can be up to 500 megahertz so now uh, so having discussed how a magnetic uh, field can be source of electric field uh, obviously as we would expect an electric field can also be a source of magnetic field in fact these are some of the most fundamental most beautiful fundamental ideas of electromagnetics again we refer to uh, ampere's law or ampere maxwell equation i i generally prefer calling it uh, again do not worry too much if you are if you are not familiar with these notations here so this is uh, but i hope you remember that b is magnetic field and j is conduction current density conduction current density okay conduction current density and do e by do t again why what is do e by do t this is just time changing electric field because we have mentioned earlier that e is electric field right and do e by do t represents uh, displacement uh, that is called displacement current density uh, so this what does this tell so the idea is that is i think more important current or a time changing field electric field which is so equivalent to a current these produce a magnetic fields so uh, please remember of course a constant current also will produce a magnetic field and yeah time changing electric field can also produce a magnetic fields so this is the idea equation uh, briefly tell us uh, time changing electric field produces a magnetic field so please remember what we have mentioned earlier a time changing magnetic field produces an electric field now 
time changing electric field produces a magnetic fields so this idea leads to uh, the electromagnetic wave uh, let us look at uh, uh, this uh, simple animation okay so so this one uh, i will uh, just start playing this so uh, as the name implies an electromagnetic field or electromagnetic wave comprises both an electric fields and a magnetic field one way of looking at this is uh, of course both have to be time changing and therefore they are coupled it is not that we have an electrostatic field and a magnetostatic field if i have then that is that does not become electromagnetic field electromagnetic field is uh, that where i have coupled the electric and magnetic fields so which means necessarily both electric field and magnetic field have to be time changing in order that they are coupled and they sustain propagation so this is uh, uh, a very uh, interesting animation of electromagnetic field and and in the so called far field we we consider that the electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other and they together are perpendicular to the direction of propagation as you can see i think this much uh, i think uh, some grasp is is enough now we can just move on to uh, specific uh, uh, bioelectromagnetic related ideas so what are the factors that uh, affect the energy absorption so please remember we have mentioned that uh, what really causes concern is the energy absorbed by biological systems if there is no energy absorption then there is no concern or there is no application also right both go hand in hand so applications and potential harm they uh, go hand in hand as most uh, aspects of technology is um, so energy absorption how does that take place because of the excitation of currents and voltages so that's the that is the idea uh so this uh, electromagnetic uh, energy as you as it is not difficult to guess it depends on uh, it, it is not constant for example if uh, uh, my exposure it is not that the electromagnetic field will be causing similar absorption in the different parts of my body and some of the reasons we will just uh, discuss the energy absorbed absorbed depends on uh, several factors frequency of course we have seen and polarization we will look at what polarization is and the complex dielectric constant that is one of the particularly important ideas we have to uh, grasp uh, to be able to uh, appreciate uh, bioelectromagnetics and mass and geometry mass of course the higher the mass you we would expect the higher uh, the absorption to be isn't it and geometry also shape shape of the object so these are all important we'll be looking at uh, particularly the polarization briefly and the complex dielectric constant and it is important to remember that the complex dielectric constant is frequency dependent not just that it also varies with the type of tissue again remember that we have you know uh, muscles bones and fats and lots of lot of things right so different uh, tissues respond to electromagnetic waves in obviously as we should be expected in different ways okay so what is this complex dielectric constant so uh, we have i hope you have some you know idea of conductivity conductivity is yeah metal is a very good conductor copper aluminium silver gold so these are very good conductors so they are okay they are also important in bioelectromagnetic applications but when we talk of biological systems uh, we don't have metals on our body but we have high water content tissues high water content tissues or uh, they they have more conductivity than drier tissues for example uh, uh, bone bone is obviously drier than uh, tendons uh, for example therefore a drier tissue is less conducting than yeah a more yeah tissue with uh, more moisture content uh, so in this uh, context the conduction current okay j we have already int uh, introduced and also a related idea is conductivity how well a material can conduct that is represented by the notation sigma uh, and the finite conductivity results in uh, loss let us again look at uh, an animation on motion this is this is actually conductor so these are ions fixed ions and then these are moving electrons okay in a conductor actually even in the absence of uh, an external voltage uh, the electrons will be moving that is what we call drift velocity but the the moment when we employ an electric field what we do is to polarize this to to uh, to make the movement possible in preferred directions that is what we do now though it is not shown these electrons will collide with themselves and also with these lattice ions that results in uh, loss heat heat comes from that that is our conception so finite conductivity but on the other hand 
uh, if you assume there is no collision at all, so it becomes a perfect conductor. There is no collision, there is no loss. But then most of the metals, practical metals, are, are not like that. Okay. Now, what are dielectrics? Dielectrics are also called insulators. This idea is particularly important, uh, as we will uh, uh, will see. And in that, we can talk of uh, non-polar dielectric and polar dielectric. Uh, we will just illustrate what they mean. Let us consider uh, the simplest uh, you know, representation of an atom. I am sure from your plus two plus one physics, you might be able to recall that Rutherford model and all right. So an atom uh, can be uh, can be uh, considered as uh, comprising a positively charged nucleus and then with uh, surrounding electron cloud. OK, so this is the electron cloud. This is nucleus and this is atom. Now there is no external electric field which is uh, uh, hitting this. Now, let us say an external electric field is is uh, is established here by using any uh, external charge distribution. Now, as you know, based on the discussions we have had, you would be able to understand that there will be a polarization taking place. Polarization means reorientation because the electric field is uh, directed like this. Um, the, the positive charge uh, nucleus will tend to move right like this. Because uh, and then correspondingly, the electron cloud will tend to uh, you know move, so uh, resulting in uh, a displacement of the center of the electron cloud, is it not? So I hope you are able to appreciate these two points. This is very important in understanding how biological systems respond to, or how we can model biological systems using dielectrics and using dielectrics whose conductivity is enhanced by adding some appropriate materials. Now I can represent this like this. Now uh, this is plus, this is minus. See here, uh, the, the positively charged, the center of the nucleus and the center of the electron cloud, they coincide. There is no displacement. Whereas here, because of the external electric field, there has been a displacement. Therefore, this becomes like a stretched spring. Right? Is that clear? Stretched spring. Therefore, this can store energy. Yes, stretched spring has energy, isn't it? If you suddenly release, then if it comes back and hits your hand, it, it hurts because of the energy. But when unstretched spring does not contain energy. So, yeah, polarized atom. So, we say this atom is polarized. How is it polarized? By, the ex by an external electric field. Now, as we know, any macroscopic material here, we have just considered at the microscopic level, one atom. Any material comprises actually a large number of atoms organized like this. Uh, so therefore, there, there is a net accumulation of uh, positive charge on the tops. Uh, uh, of course, that depends on the direction of the uh, exciting, exciting electric field. And there is a, in this uh, situation, there is a net accumulation of negative charge. Now, one important idea is there is an internal electric field represented by yellow line because of this overall accumulation in this fashion, there is an internal electric field which which uh, appears like this. Um, now, we introduce the idea of relative permittivity epsilon or dash uh, to account for this energy storage. How energy storage? Please remember our previous slide where uh, the the, uh, the uh, establishment of an external electric field has resulted in the stretching of the atom, which means that is the energy, a uh, stretched uh, spring, right? So that is the stored energy. The stored energy is represented by uh, introducing a term called relative permittivity. Now, it is not difficult to, uh, you know, grasp that different materials. You take uh, uh, wood, glass, plastics, nylon, Teflon. These are different dielectrics. Obviously, we would not expect all these materials to have uh, same relative permittivity. Each of them, each material is different, right? That is why we give them different names. Uh, therefore, their energy storing capacity is obviously different. Uh, that is uh, proportionately represented by, uh, you know, defining this epsilon or dash for each material. So relative permittivity epsilon or dash is a very important parameter in the context of electromagnetics in general and bioelectromagnetics in, in particular. So this is uh, uh, non-polar materials in polar dielectrics. Now, see, we have actually introduced this polar, how polarization. So in polar dielectrics, we have, uh, you know, uh, randomly oriented permanent dipole moments. What do we mean? Of course, these are some examples, uh, hydrochloride and then uh, water and all. So uh, now there are, this is a dipole, right? 
we have seen uh, when we discussed electric field in the beginning, we introduced a dipole. So this there is a dipole, dipole, dipole here. But this, these are all randomly oriented. Therefore, there is no net internal electric field. Whereas in the when there is an external electric field impinging on this, then these dipoles tend to get polarized. So this is uh, polar uh, dielectrics, these being some of the examples. And fat, fat is also a polar dielectric. Now, biological materials are lossy. So we have what we have assumed till now is the dielectrics are uh, ideal dielectrics, which means there is no conductivity in them. But there is nothing like an ideal dielectric because all dielectrics come with certain conductivity, just the way all practical conductors come with certain resistivity. Uh, so biological materials are lossy, which means their conductivity. Remember this notation, right? Sigma is not zero. And loss changes the way EM wave interacts uh, with them. And if you remember the animation that we have seen uh, a couple of minutes back where the electrons moving and also the fact that when uh, an external electromagnetic field, when it, uh, when, when it hits a biological system, it induces currents. Current is a moment of charge. Therefore, the moments are going to interact with each other, right? So the loss changes the way electromagnetic wave uh, interacts with them and power gets deposited in the lossy material. This is energy absorption. So that is important. If there is no energy absorption, there is no concern. Power gets deposited, resulting in heating, right? As we all are, are familiar with the heating results of our gadgets, mobile phone gets heated when I use it for a long time. And now how do we account for loss in dielectrics? We have discussed uh, 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 conduction. How conduction? Any practical dielectric has a finite conduction, which represents, which also uh, accounts for loss because of the reasons we have discussed. Another interesting aspect is called relaxation or damping, uh, which we will uh, understand by looking at this animation. I think th this is this is good. Uh, now this is the atom. Uh, now, when we, uh, the electric field is changing electric field, uh, right, changing electric field, then we should expect the polarization also to change, right? That stretching, because uh, again, go back uh, in time by a few minutes and then recollect what we discussed that plus uh, the electron cloud and the centers displacing, that direction will change when the electric field is alternating. Right. So this is, uh, you know, we can conceptualize this as a mechanical process, whereas this is an electrical process. Now, the when you increase the frequency and obviously the rate of change of this polarization also is going to change, that is going to result in damping or some friction because this cannot cope up with uh, the, the kind of, you know, uh, frequency rise. Therefore, that will result in loss. And this can also be, this, you know, changing when the polarization quickly changes, uh, we can also associate a current, polarization current uh, in, in the process. Uh, so that is called relaxation or damping. Other one is by conduction. So even when a dielectric does not have conductivity, it can still have, uh, laws which can be accounted for by relaxation or damping as we have as we have just seen. Uh, therefore, we make the permittivity complex for lossy materials. We, we define a complex uh, permittivity as epsilon dash minus j. Uh, most of you would be familiar with complex numbers, but the, the idea is that we want to account for the laws, whereas epsilon uh, dash that we introduced some time back, that uh, assumed the material to be lossless. But for lossy dielectrics, we have to also account for, and they, that epsilon dash that represents represented only energy storing ability. But apart from storage, there is also loss. So which we account for by introducing uh, complex uh, permittivity. So this is lossless component. And uh, this component arises not only because of conduction, but also because of damping. Damping is uh, the result of the polarization changing uh, consistent with the changing uh, electric fields. So we define a uh, loss tangent or dissipation factor for a lossy dielectric as this and sigma plus what is sigma conductivity. So conduction loss and omega epsilon dash. This is because of the damping, right? If you are able to relate with our, this discussion, whereas the denominator omega epsilon dash that represents the storing ability of. So this represents the loss, the numerator. This represents the storage ability that 
collectively represents the loss tangent or dissipation factor of, of, of a dielectric. And uh, this term, this, uh, you know, not, should not be a surprise. This term is called effective conductivity in lossy materials, sigma plus omega epsilon 2 dash. OK, we will move on. Uh, it is not difficult to understand that the higher the loss tangent, the more lossy is the material. OK, they are one and the same thing. Higher loss corresponds to higher uh, loss tangent. For most bioelectromagnetic applications, when we, uh, the pacemaker or any, any devices, we assume metals to be perfect conductors, which means they uh, have infinite conductivity and zero resistance. We assume them to be lossless. Uh, that is for uh, as an approximation. And we can introduce for lossy dielectrics, we uh, we can determine uh, attenuation constant alpha, like this omega is angular frequency, okay, angular frequency. And then uh, mu dash, which we have not discussed, is uh, called magnetic permeability. And epsilon dash we have discussed, and effective conductivity omega is nepers per meter. So this is attenuation constant. We can consider a, uh, a quick example after. So what happens? So uh, since the biological systems are essentially comprised of lossy dielectrics, okay, a lossy material. So electromagnetic wave, once it enters into the body, it suffers an attenuation like that, more or less an exponential attenuation. So the depth to which the electromagnetic wave is able to penetrate into the biological system, that depends on uh, the different factors as we have mentioned, polarization, the shape of the body and frequency and the properties, electrical properties of the materials uh, 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 where or, the, or that part where the electromagnetic wave has hit. And one very quick example, we can just uh, look at uh, uh, 433 megahertz and omega is uh, straight away 2 pi into 433 megahertz. And here muscle relative permittivity uh, has been estimated as uh, 64.21 for human biological systems and conductivity is uh, 0.969 for Siemens per meter and human body. So when we model human body, it is usually represented by two third of muscle. Therefore, sigma and the epsilon are multiplied by two third. Therefore, we get these figures and alpha can be calculated to be 17.85 nepers per meter. So if we uh, look at this, so what happens if an electric field, let us say an electric field of one volt per meter has been just excited just inside the body, just inside the body. So at a distance of just 10 centimeter into the muscle, uh, then it gets reduced by this much. So what we have is 0 0.0168. So how much reduction? So this translates into a power reduction of just the power is reduced by 2.2 percent of its original value. So within a distance of 10 centimeter. Of course, this is important both when we consider applications because when I intentionally want to heat some tissues and also when I'm concerned about the possible health effect of uh, biological radiation. Of course, very quick, uh, you know, look at loss, less materials, uh, conductivity is zero. And they are also called perfect dielectrics and obviously no power is lost or deposited and EM waves do not heat up. So if our body, I mean, assuming that our body was were composed of lossless materials, then there would not be not only uh, applications, but also health impact. So again, I mean, the, the fact is, I mean, the, the one of the things we should probably keep in mind that, uh, you know, uh, technological, all aspects of technology have both sides. So there are advantages, very significant advantages, there are also health concerns. So of course, these can make uh, good electrical insulators. Now, as we mentioned, polarization is another aspect that, uh, that impacts the way uh, uh, electromagnetic waves interact with uh, biological systems. And polarization uh, is actually defined as the orientation of the electric field with respect to the object. That's all. So very simple. So these are uh, for objects of rotation. OK, for objects of rotation, we can define three polarizations, E, H and K. And E polarization, when the electric field, uh, incident electric field lies along the long axis of the object. Of course, we will illustrate with a uh, uh, picture in the next, next slide. And then similarly, H polarization is when the H field is along the long axis. And K is when the propagation vector. See, uh, please remember what we mentioned some time back in uh, four fields. OK, electromagnetic wave comprises. Uh, uh, electric and magnetic fields which are perpendicular to each other and they are perpendicular to the direction of propagation k that is represented by k k polarization is when the propagation director is along the axis of the long axis of the object so this is how if this is the object okay 
Now, this is the object. I can talk of E polarization. You see the E field is aligned along the long axis. Here the H field is aligned along long axis and, and so on. So these are the three polarizations we can um, uh, uh, we are interested in. Now, uh, coming to energy absorption in uh, humans, um, this uh, energy transfer, how much of energy is transferred or how much of energy is absorbed is an important consideration uh, when we talk of uh, both uh, applications as well as possible uh, health impact and hyperthermia in ha cancer therapy where tissue heating is involved. This is what we are interested in. And most biological tissues are non-magnetic, so therefore, uh, e field transfer is pre predominant, though uh, for very high magnetic fields, of course, as we will briefly mention in due course. Uh, but then uh, for many of the applications, we are mainly bothered about the E field uh, transfer because of the biological tissues being essentially non-magnetic. And the power transfer to charges uh, in a differential volume uh, delta V can be written like this. So this is power transfer. What is this? This is effective conductivity of lossy dielectrics. And this is the electric field. RMS represents the RMS or average value. And delta V is the volume uh, in which we are interested in uh, how much power is uh, transferred. Now uh, we can uh, you know, write down the density uh, as power density is uh, conductivity into. So what is that? Power by uh, volume, right? Power by volume, and specific absorption rate is defined as this. So what is so this conductivity? So average value. This is volume by mass, mass of the that volume, right? Mass corresponding to the volume. So that I can just write like this, where I have introduced a new term called rho, which is called mass density, mass density in kilogram per meter cube. And for most biological tissues except lung, uh, the mass density has been found to be approximately one kilogram per meter cube, whereas for lung it is 0 0.347. So when we calculate specific absorption rate, so we, we are referring to how much of electromagnetic energy is absorbed in that particular uh, region of the body, right? So specific absorption rate this is a very important uh, specification for mobile phones or and for many other applications. So this is called a point function. As, as we, what is a point function? A point function is just that which, which, which which is defined at a point. Why we do that is that uh, at another point, the, the value may not hold. It could be a different value, which is the case, because it is not that we have, uh, you know, all, all the time homogeneous material filling any space, including biological systems. So properties all often change uh, in different locations. So SAR is a point function. Uh, but then when we talk of uh, sp space average SAR for a body, when we say for uh, human beings this much, uh, human bodies this much SAR is acceptable, what we do is we calculate the average of local SAR over the entire body. What is SAR here, here, like that you make an average that becomes the space average SAR. And uh, uh, tissue with higher water content, so which means higher conductivity, such as muscle, it has more loss because more conductivity, more collision, therefore more loss than drier tissues such as bone and fat. This, this is very important. Um, and another important thing is please remember that sigma, uh, that effective conductivity when we wrote down, uh, the omega factor is was there, right? Omega, sigma, correct, right? So that, that omega is angular frequency, therefore the conductivity increases with frequency, uh, which automatically implies that the higher the frequency, the higher is the loss, okay? And therefore, also higher frequencies attenuate more because the conductivity is higher, therefore attenuation is higher. So what does it mean? At higher frequencies, much less field is present at these frequencies. Very quickly, I want to mention the bioheat equation. So when, for example, in applications such as hyperthermia, when we heat, so how the temperature rise? Uh, let us say when I'm just heating by exposure to electromagnetic uh, radiation, will the heat continue to increase linearly? Uh, actually, no, because of uh, the uh, the involvement of several factors. So this is temperature rise in uh, tissue is given by th this equation. Uh, temperature rises linearly to start with. So this is important, interesting idea. For three minutes, when we when we consider a 50 watt hyperthermia treatment, temperature rises linearly for about three minutes, and then vasodilation. What is that? That the, the expansion of because heating heating results in uh, expansion of veins, right? blood carrying vessels. So what happens is blood flow increases. 
so the the transfer of heat to other regions also increases so which means the rate of heat the, the temperature rise cannot be expected to remain same the blood flow becomes more uh, therefore the temperature gets more distributed uh, so ways of dilation affects and in uh, tumors high perfusion of uh, blood at uh, periphery outer region of uh, tumors and low perfusion in uh, center and also steady state blood flow in the normal tissue is higher uh, than in tumor normal tissue steady state blood flow so what this implies is normal dis tissue gets uh, cooled uh, faster whereas tumor continues to rise in temperature why because tumor uh, the uh, perfusion of blood is slower so uh, the temperature transfer becomes sort of slower therefore temperature rise becomes uh, better that is what we want right we we want the tumor part to be uh, heated without significantly affecting the uh, unaffected uh, uh, tissues so these are the ideas so this variation uh, begins at about 10 minutes into the treatment and another very interesting and important aspect is resonance so what is resonance let us look at one uh, interesting animation wave hits the ball or something and comes back and the next wave is launched in proper time such that they get added they reinforce each other resulting in a gradual building up of the wave whereas here uh, the, the the build up the, the launch of the next wave was not timed properly resulting uh, there is no so so the, the as a consequence there is no build up here so there is a build up here this is called resonance uh, so this idea is is very important if you consider a cavity a cavity is let us just you know simply put it is uh, for our purposes here it is just a two dimensional uh, metallic uh, cavity so in this uh, how does resonance occur when the wavelength when half wavelength exactly matches the dimensions of this cavity then a similar build up will happen and that is what we call resonance so when we uh, electric field to be generated uh, at a particular frequency so if you calculate uh, that frequency for this these dimensions it works out to uh, 670 megahertz so if you calculate the wavelength and consider the lambda by 2 that will more or less correspond to this 23 uh, cm so this idea is very important resonance because when uh, the the kind of energy absorbed in my head is not going to be the same uh, as the energy absorbed by my hand or by my legs because different parts have different resonant frequencies or we can also talk of the resonant frequency of the whole body it depends on you know how we we our focus is uh, so resonance effects in the human body is yes, very similar obviously we should expect they reverberate they just go back and forth and then they add each other uh, therefore uh, different parts absorb different frequencies in uh, in different intensities so this causes much more power to be absorbed at specific frequencies than in the process of uh, usual attenuation okay so it is not only the usual attenuation as we discussed that matters in uh, in examining the energy absorption in uh, biological systems it is also resonance also needs to be taken into account um, uh, so attenuation effects result in more absorption at high frequencies than at low frequencies uh, because of the resonance effect uh, so uh, for example a 6 foot tall human should resonate at about 75 megahertz okay if ungrounded and 38 megahertz if grounded uh, so what is this grounding uh, don't bother too much about it so uh, if a human being is standing on what can be modeled as a good conductor then we can bring in uh, the so called image theory and then have uh, you know the image of the original object which in this case is a human uh, being and uh, therefore uh, this this change occurs so anyway uh, just uh, look at this uh, so different heights uh, people are of different heights therefore Uh, they all respond so this introduces uh, complexity right so individual parts of the body also can obviously will resonate at different frequencies and animals of different sizes and shapes have different resonant frequencies as well uh, therefore uh, there are difficulties with the biological so when we talk of exposure obviously we can't consider all the possible variations in life right so we have to generalize so that limitation of course in any any uh, aspect of science and technology that that the holds um so uh, in summary electromagnetic absorption in humans is very strongly dependent upon the frequency not just frequency by the shape and size of the body and the tissue properties by shape and size size resonance tissue properties attenuation and obviously frequency also matters so these are the uh, fundamental aspects so this is a very quick uh, look at how 
uh, a typical uh, distribution of energy uh, deposition in a human body you know, can be uh, can be understood so you see the different parts you know there are different absorption levels now how uh, electromagnetic so what are the actual manifestation uh, one is heating heating is something we all routinely you know uh, experience so this is caused by tissue heating and power deposition is measured by a specific absorption rate uh, but this is a very important factor uh, to to keep in mind a, a specific absorption rate of 1 watt per kilogram if you have to have that it requires 1.1 .1 hour of continuous exposure to an in internal electric field of 45 volts per meter. And again, see how that is frequency dependent, 45 volt per meter at 1 kilohertz, whereas just 27 volt per meter at 1 gigahertz. Because higher frequencies, higher attenuation, therefore higher loss, isn't it? Therefore, so this, this one, to generate 1 degree Celsius, if I want to result in, if I want to increase the temperature, uh, by one degree Celsius, these are the values. So continuous exposure is, is important. But then even small gradients of temperature within the body can result in sensation and pain. Gradient means change. For example, this part is slightly at a different temperature compared to the other part. That can be significant. Okay. So this is also an important aspect. And audio effects can be uh, felt at uh, 300 volt per meter electric field. When a person's head is exposed to yeah, please read, uh, pulsed. So I, you understand pulse, therefore I am sure you are able to appreciate this. And uh, also, uh, this though we have said that magnetic fields, biological tissues are mostly non-magnetic, but then we also mentioned at a higher, uh, very high magnetic field, that is not the case. So magneto hydrodynam hydrodynamic effects, uh, uh, high magnetic fields such as 1.5 Tesla and above, they can induce force on flowing blood. Okay, so these in turn can cause uh, taste sensations and, and vertigo. So these are all some uh, effects that can manifest. And uh, what is a brief consideration of a dosimetry? Uh, dosimetry is, uh, is used to determine the strength, uh, direction and polarization of uh, electromagnetic fields. And um, uh, so how do we, we actually don't do this in actual uh, bodies. We use models, okay, called phantoms. Um, so the prediction of strength of fields in the head from cell phones to determine if a particular design meets regulatory guidelines. So we have to see like cell phones, uh, whether the SAR of uh, cell phones meets with the uh, international specifications. And also uh, the other application is when we want to determine the signal to noise ratio of uh, for coils for magnetic uh, resonance imaging. So early dosimetry models uh, were uh, spherical, spheroidal, ellipsoidal biological models. How were these, these built? Using uh, dielectric materials with the different uh, conductivity, of course, uh, and they provide valuable modern uh, methods, more modern methods or experimental animals. Let me not focus on that. And we use also models consisting of material that has permittivity and conductivity similar to that of human tissue. That is the idea. So if I'm able to produce a material that uh, resembles largely the actual biological system in terms of electrical properties, then I can use this model to study the impact of electromagnetic radiation. These are called phantoms. And um, uh, so, so this is uh, what we use for our, our studies. So this um, is, is a phantom uh, model. Uh, so I think you can just uh, read this, uh, head and torso. Epoxy, epoxy is a kind of plastic doped with the salt. Why do we do this? You know, this trick is done so that the conductivity can match with the conductivity of the actual biological system. And the head is filled with the semi-solid phantom material that has the properties of the brain. So overall idea, I hope, I, I hope is clear. And then the electric field probe uh, can be measured using probes. And here, of course, the Professor Cynthia first, who is the next speaker. Uh, earlier, I had requested her to label this. Uh, she she did this. So this is the electric field probe. This is the this is the phantom model. And this is and uh, I know some of you may have uh, heard of this name, Dr. O. M. Uh, Gandhi. He is very one of the exponents. Uh, Uta group has uh, has had a very active group in bioelectromagnetic applications. So this is uh, Cindy's account of how they uh, built this uh, phantom model. Uh, you can just uh, uh, go through hopefully later. Uh, so now uh, we have regulations. Why we have regulations? So we use dosimetry to determine the amount of power fields in current in various parts of the body. But whether these, so the, it is one thing to calculate, it is another to determine if these are safe or not, uh, you know, that requires an understanding of what kind of manifestation these fields have. 
so how uh, this has been um, uh, done? So allowable frequencies or a number of government regulations impact the design of uh, electromagnetic devices, including the allowable frequency. Uh, so, uh, so this is also, I think I will say band. I think I will uh, just skip this. You can hopefully we will, uh, you'll be able to have a look at this later. Uh, so I think I will also, so limits on absorbed power. So the, the initially by IEEE established uh, limits on whole body absorbed power uh, defined by SAR in 1991. And these were adapted by American National Standards Institute in the subsequent year. Uh, but of course, these groups do not have regulatory authority. But however, their uh, you know, recommendations have been uh, uh, have served as the basis for regulations by uh, US Food and Drug Administration and also FCC. Uh, so these, uh, you know, how, what is the rationally they have used on the thermal effects from power uh, deposition in the body and the body's ability to dissipate heat. Uh, so those of you interested can uh, look at this uh, interesting report. Uh, so I come to the summary, my time is up. Uh, so what we have seen is uh, electric and magnetic field ideas, very important, very important. So we can't get to advanced ideas without having a solid grasp of fundamentals. And then what are the mechanisms and factors that impact electromagnetic energy absorption and uh, how we can model the electrical properties of human body. Then we also briefly looked at uh, uh, human models and uh, regulations. Uh, so thank you for your attention. So these are the references I have used. Uh, so since the time is up, I'll be happy. So those of you who have questions, so please email me. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them to the best of uh, my ability. Thank you very much.